So I had a one of my employees or one of my coworkers uh, send me a video or a news article by the Sacramento Bee, um, and it was an interview with Gavin Newsom. Um, it was quite interesting, actually, especially towards the end, and I'll get into it when it comes around. But uh, I'm going to start off with this. I do actually, yeah, and I think businesses need to as well. I'll tell you the consequences if businesses don't support it. We'll be dealing with a half dozen initiatives after its failure that will create more challenges for them than they ever could have imagined. I hope they'll come on board. I don't know if the governor is going to support it publicly, but I'd be surprised if his finance office wasn't supporting it privately. The math is not working out in the state. So, do you think? I mean, you think a 13.3 percent? It's very high. Income tax rate is very high. It's very high. It's high. Our our corporate. No, I mean. Uh, it's high. Taxes are high in California. I had no idea. They only take a third of my fucking paycheck every month. State and local, thirteen percent. That's just state. That's not including all the Medicare and Social Security and fucking all the other bullshit that I'm probably not going to get when I'm old. Uh, well, all in maybe if you add city taxes, we're right there with a couple of cities. I mean, New York, obviously. We're very close. Uh, well, look, it's high because we have relative stability with property taxes, so it's a seesaw. And then you, know, so you have corporate tax rates, your, your income tax rates, and your, even capital gains or tax income. So. All this is high. Now, if you can have a conversation about one, you can have a conversation then about the other, sales tax included. But no one wants to have it because everyone's got a trophy on the wall and they're going to fight to the death to make sure you're not including that in the conversation. So you're left with this side of the ledger, not much room. And I think that's unfortunate because we're not having a sustainable conversation that someone like Hertzberg, to his credit, is having, forcing us to have about what is our tax system. And I, I applaud him for it. Whether I agree with every detail or not, I don't. Uh, he keeps changing anyway, so I don't even know what the latest iteration is. But I appreciate that he's having this conversation. We need to have this grown-up conversation, not just internally, but have it with the public about what's at stake. Because right now, this is not sustainable. Where do you come down on the service? The, the I'm, I'm very open to where he is on all that. I mean, it's the, the con we're taxing economy that we were taxing 100 years ago, and that economy doesn't exist as it did 100 years ago. So that's also an interesting point because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, uh, California is, you know, the seventh biggest economy in the world. But you also have to consider the fact that they have like over at where California, at the population is massive. So when you take it in that consideration, uh, yeah, Ohio isn't going to be producing the same with three million people as it's going to be producing with. I think it's like 40 million people in California or 35 million people in California. So just by population alone makes it a powerhouse uh, economy. So, but what he is suggesting is that it's not being taxed correctly um, based on its output. So maybe that means tax increase. I don't know. And uh, so I, I think it's a very healthy conversation. It's just a tough one because you have every interest group up here that doesn't want to have it because they have some benefit, some extraction, some gain that they've fought hard and spent a lot of money on or invested time and energy on. So what about the 13.3%? It's very high. Is it too high? Do you think it I'm supporting the tax under the circumstance with the absence of the alternatives that are in front of us and the realities that we face in the short term. Uh, that's why I support the governor's budget, the spirit of his budget, even though I'd like to see more money in, you know, uh, prenatal care um, and some other areas. But I do believe that under the circumstances, given the limited choices, that it's appropriate. But no, 13.3 is um, not competitive tax. So 13.3% is not competitive. So what he basically, right, that right there tells me that he wants to bring it down right uh 
Whether he does it or not, I don't know. I hope that he does because that means more money in my pocket and that means more money that's going to be spent on the economy or maybe I'll be able to save money and eventually afford a house or something in California because it's just the living conditions out here are ridiculous. Uh, the rent is astronomically high and what's funny is we I ended up moving, right? And between the time when I, because I only had a one year lease, by the end of that one year, rent prices were coming down and at the same time i was driving around downtown looking for places it was like i, I had to pick of the litter nobody could afford them i could literally just go around and be like yeah i'll take this one because the prices were too high they were asking too much i found an amazing place for a great price because the my landlord basically said, look, I, nobody can afford it. I'm surprised you bit. You know, and I'm thinking, damn, maybe I could bring you down a couple water bucks, but, you know, whatever. Anyways, so interesting that uh, he, he, wants to, he wants to reduce taxes uh, at a state level. So, interesting. I wonder how he's going to offset the reduction in taxes and the cost of government because the cost of government in California is also very high which is why the taxes are so high <sighs> alright let's go yeah I mean there's certain things you do you don't make you know I don't want to do the Voltaire on you be a cliche about enemy of the good perfect enemy of the good but um, you know we've served this economy is thrived since we increased that tax rate. It belies everything Bill O'Reilly and Lou Dobbs claims. Oh, God. He just, he just, uh, how are you going to say all that great stuff and then completely ruin everything with that one line? Increasing taxes isn't a burden on people or businesses. But yet the tax rate's too high. We need to lower it. <laughs> what? That's a typical po politician flip-flop. Everything. I don't know how they handle the success of the state. It's a burden beyond belief for them, I think. And please don't show this to them, because every time I mention him, he does a piece on me. Oh, yeah. But... Oh my God! Well, what yeah, is back? But but my, my point being, um, <laughs> you know, I just the dystopian view that somehow increasing tax rates somehow is going to uh, disrupt job creation, job growth. Obviously, the facts suggest differently in California, which is important. But look, I don't think ass. this is a long-term strategy. I don't think it's competitive moving forward. Uh, but we're not, we're not at a place where we, we have not done justice to the conversation that. We're um. So he says it's not competitive, but at the same time, he doesn't see how it's a burden. I hope that he makes up his mind and makes up the right choice because as far as I'm concerned, this video has a lot of very good content in it, but it's also like, you just said that you need to lower taxes, but at the same time, you're saying that the t high taxes isn't a burden. Jesus. We should have been having for the last five years, 10 years, about radically reforming Try our 30. tax system in the state. What is done can be undone. Um, and I'm not suggesting a plan to do that or a strategy, but I am suggesting that I am committed to looking to structural reform in the state. I don't think reform is overrated. I think it's profoundly difficult. Thank God. Yes. Including taxes and services. I, I think you have to look across the board, and I think that Hertzberg has put out a good document to begin anew those conversations. I really think he's done a service. Now, I'm biased because I've had those conversations with the same folks he's had for years, in California Forward and elsewhere. 
and look, you know, it's great to do the prophylactic and great to have the band-aids on, you know, with the rainy day reserve and all these things to capture. And those are done because we need to do them because we have a bad system that everyone agrees is too reliant on what Janet Yellen does. And the fact that we have to wake up every day worrying about what Janet Yellen does to determine the fate of our child care programs doesn't sit well with me. Whoa. Did he just suggest that he wants to take take a head, take the ship by the, you know what, the Fed? He basically just said that he wants to set up a tax reform system that's going to give them enough cush in case the Fed tries to raise rates and crash the economy. Wow, you're just now doing this? This should have been done a long time ago, like pre-2008, you jackwagon. But thankfully, you get to be the guy that, you know, sets it up. And I hope you do, because there is a vast amount of people that absolutely despise the Fed. So... To hear that coming from even a left-leaning or left-leaning Democrat is actually quite interesting. Okay, and there have been radical, not radical leftist Democrats, but radical as in like, what the hell is this guy doing? If he puts together something that allows for uh, California to withstand a recession from the Fed have this mass surplus to do as they wish or set it up to like a almost like a trust fund or something I don't know how the hell they would do it but hopefully they make the right decisions I'm not the right person to talk about running a budget for an entire uh, state but I will say one thing, if you can set up a system to combat uh, interest rate, the rise of interest rates and in, uh, uh, from the Fed, I mean, you're looking at basically a recession proof state. I just hope that they don't put, I don't, I hope that they don't use this as a way to fund government uh, programs. And unfortunately, because we're in the infancy stage of his governorship, or governorship, or whatever the hell you call it, we don't know what he's going to do. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is all talk, but to hear him talk about the Fed? Now, I don't know how old this interview is, but he's talking about yelling. Okay? We got Powell in there now. So... Very interesting to hear that coming from him. That's a system that apparently everyone is accepting. I'm not satisfied with it, and I think we need to change it, and I would commit to changing that, or at least beginning to have that conversation and create the conditions where we can change it. That's not easy, and so, I, I'm not naive about that. It's not easy, and I'm not naive about that. Unbelievable. Well... I hope that they come up with a better system. California has had problems, will always have problems until they are fixed. Uh, regardless, we can't even properly manage our forests, let alone have a balanced budget. Um, in Sacramento, which is the capital of California, uh, where they want to, you know, have a bullet train that goes into LA and all this random stuff, and they want to connect. They want to. They want to turn uh, Sacramento into a hub, which I guarantee Gavin Newsom will probably do during his six years. Um, but I will say one thing. Sacramento has seen the largest increase in, in, uh, in uh, local businesses are coming up like crazy. I have never seen so many breweries in one city, um, and I cannot believe the amount of restaurants and everything else. I mean, 
it is a very service-based economy in in the city so not sure um where that'll all go if there is some kind of recession or maybe there's uh you know a stock market crash um it's hard to say a lot of people have been talking about a 2019 uh recession with the crash of the stock market i don't know gold hasn't really moved a whole lot uh oil prices are uh actually coming down because the u.s is now the number one exporter of of uh crude oil uh because of the shale revolution here in america all the fracking that we've been doing um and the 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 price of oil is is coming down like i said and it seems like the engine that drives the economy is actually turning around and i could be wrong right because there are there are a lot of uh stocks that you would normally think would be you know safe havens are not anymore um i would not be surprised if a lot of people go out of business here in the near future um as they kind of have probably overspent or over leveraged themselves and they are unable to pay back or buy back any of their stocks and so that will cause them to fail um anyways i hope that uh you all learned something from this video uh i have some faith in gavin newsom because he is he is a uh he is younger um obviously he comes from silicon valley and he probably has some uh self-interest in uh keeping more money in silicon valley's pockets and also connecting silicon valley to the rest of california which will allow the money to spread out um so if you like I said, if you have a restaurant, if you have a brewery, if you have, you know, some kind of clothing store or something like that, chances are you're probably going to be successful in California because the wealth is getting ready to spread out. Um, but as far as this point goes, like I said, infancy stage, we'll see what happens. And I will see you all next time. Maybe.